I'm here to do some commentary and give personal feedback about my speeches this semester. I'll also explain speaking, kill, speaking skills I learned before and after every video. Personally, the two biggest skills when it comes to a speech are confidence and preparation. I was very prepared for the partner speech, but not confident at all. I just switched into the class a week before and didn't know anyone in it. Here's my partner speech about Josh. But uh, his birthday is August 15th. Like I said, he's a sophomore <laughs> studying ESM. Uh, he describes himself as laid back with a dry sense of humor and proper etiquette. He's very respectful to other people. Um, he's the third child of four kids. He has a younger brother and then an older brother and older sister. Uh, his role model, actually his family is his biggest role model and biggest influence. They taught him proper etiquette, respect, like I just mentioned. Um, his biggest role model coming from his dad because he put his children first by the, working long hours every week. Uh, at Northwood, he's actually a center back and two-year captain as a sophomore on the men's soccer team here. Uh, every year he's played soccer growing up, he's won some sort of silverware, whether it's league championship, MVP, he's had a lot of success on the soccer field, and that success has actually carried over to the classroom where he's made the dean's list. Um, he wants to use his degree to network with other people and become an athletic director. Um, some fun facts or extra info about Josh and his free time he likes going to the gym. That includes going to the turf room and practice soccer at least five times a week. Um, he likes watching UFC and his favorite fighter is Conor McGregor, who is very entertaining to watch. And he also likes playing Call of Duty just like me. Um, he's done some interesting traveling, which includes going to France where he climbed the Eiffel Tower and actually skied in the French Alps. Back in England, he worked as a referee and a bartender, which is, seems pretty exciting. I don't know, I've always kind of wanted to try that. And uh, his favorite music is by Ed Sheeran and Coldplay. And that's my partner, Josh Waits. You could tell I wasn't very confident. I was fidgeting a lot, playing with my nose, itching my nose, whatever. And confidence came as time went on. This next speech was my sales pitch. I was trying to sell a product that was not well marketed, and that is how I learned my third skill. That is engaging the audience, or in this case, connecting them to the product. So you'll see how I did that here in my sales pitch in the second video. All right, good morning. Um, how many of you guys have used or seen a Stan's product or visited this website? Okay, I'm actually surprised there was one because it's not well marketed and usually not many people know about it. Um, my objective is actually have you go visit the website as soon as you leave this class because they got a lot of great products. I'm actually wearing a pair right now. Oh, sorry, you must do that. <laughs> All right, so dress socks, usually they're uncomfortable and your feet get hot after you wear them for a while. And athletic socks, same idea, get uncomfortable. Well, there's a solution to all your problems. Outdoorgear.com can back me up on this one. When they first opened the package and reviewed it, they said the socks were premium uh, because of their stitching and high quality. Um, and when they say comfy, they mean it. Uh, Fither and Groomstyle.com, who have done reviews for websites such as Amazon and uh, Google, I think was the other one, say they're a mix of style and comfort with dizzying uh, mashups of music, sport, and art. So how are they comfortable? They're athletically ribbed and have uh, arch support, so when you walk, they flex. When you walk, see, basically it feels like nothing's there. The socks are durable. They can handle many washes, and their toe stitching, their toe closure uh, is very durable. There's no holes. I've had mine for two years, no problems at all. Uh, breathable stitching obviously allows your feet to breathe when you're wearing them in dress shot or dress shoes or basketball shoes, whatever you're wearing them with. And style uh, might not be physical comfort, but when you have that like that swag and confidence, uh, it makes you feel a lot happier about what you're wearing. Um, to tie things off, when you walk around in style and comfort, like I said, you're a lot more confident and you enjoy what you're wearing. Um, you can use them anywhere: church, banquet, basketball practice, working out, games, whatever it is. There's a use for it. Anytime. Um, you can go check them out online. So you can see I connected with the audience by adding humor and actually wearing the product myself as I gave the speech. My third video and actually the fourth speech we gave was the Ignite speech. An Ignite speech is when the slides automatically change on their own. So the fourth skill I learned was to stay relaxed and make sure things didn't get out of hand. Because it's something I've done my entire life and is actually my favorite stress reliever. I actually chose the theme for this slide show because And I apologize ahead of time if I start bragging about myself a little bit. Um, my best friends growing up were also teammates of mine in various sports. You can see even though we were teammates for years, we still liked each other enough to hang out at the 
senior prom. From tennis to baseball to, uh, to football from age four to 20, my teammates have also been my best friends. So sports in real life, I believe sports is the best when it comes to developing skills I carry over to the real world. Almost everything I know today I have learned from sports. It's a great resume builder. Everybody I've interviewed with loves that. I've played sports now as captain and lead teams and everything like that. And just like in real life, you're going to have a crappy coach, which is just like a crappy boss. Um, sports, you kind of learn the setting goals, hard work, working with others, you know, all that basic stuff, like you said. But without it, we wouldn't have been 2015 champs, and I think because of that is why we are so successful. Some think they can earn success without grinding and hard work. Well, that's because they're just lazy. Some who grind don't even succeed on their own. Just like in the business world, athletes must grind to win, and if they want to win, they gotta grind. And with that hard work and grinding comes success, and we saw that this past March with UMBC, who is the best underdog we've ever seen, I think, other than maybe Leicester City, but um, they were the first 16 seed to ever beat a one seed, and Virginia was the number one overall seed, and out of 132 games, they were the first to do it. Although I hate U of M, Tom Brady is still a monster. He's considered the greatest quarterback of all time, in my opinion. He's actually the greatest athlete of all time, too, at football. And now, even at the age of 40, his work ethic has still made him an elite quarterback. Personally, um, I've had a long time of sports. Yes, it's actually me in the picture. Um, I started playing sports when I could walk and started organized sports at the age of four. My favorite toy growing up was actually a little Tykes basketball hoop, which you might be able to see behind my head in the picture. But when it came to high school, coming into freshman year, I had high expectations for myself. I always thought I'd be the starter and leading scorer. However, my coach didn't see it the same way. I was assigned team manager, and I had to sweep the floors and fill water before every game, and I absolutely hated it. But I knew I wanted to play JV and varsity at Troy High, so starting the next summer, I spent hours playing basketball and lifting weights. Senior year, I started every game, and I even have a record at my school for most threes made in a single game. I even had an online article right about me, and that's a picture of it on the right. Passion, uh, every athlete should have it. If you are passionate about sports, then you shouldn't be playing or competing in sports at all. If Michael Phelps didn't love swimming, he went to win so many medals. And next you'll see how much I love basketball and how passionate I am. Because my first practice senior or sophomore year, I was named captain of the team, over three seniors actually. And the first game, first half of the year, I tore four ligaments in my ankle and foot in the first game, which caused me to be in crutches and a walking boot and did 10 weeks of rehab. But I thought it was all worth it because I knew I wanted to come back stronger and help the team win. And I knew that if I came back, we started over. So you could see I stayed relaxed under the pressure of the slides changing on their own. And this brings us to our final video. I saved our third speech of the panel discussion because uh, it has all the traits, including the fifth one, which is composition or proper construction or organization. I had to create my own role, and I did that with my organization of my role of the character that I was playing, which was a police officer. Seven years as an officer serving the Highway Patrol and Public Safety Squad. For the last four years, I've been the Sheriff of Lansing Police Department. I've handled many drunk and disruptive kids being in East Lansing and adults, whether it is in fraternity houses or tailgates at Spartan, St at Spartan Stadium. I personally experience underage drinking. I know underage drinking will always happen no matter what the age is at. And recently, laws have been changed, so MIP rules are a little more lenient. Um, which makes kids, you know, not so fearful of the law when they're drinking. For years, I believe that lowering the drinking age will have a positive effect on automobile accidents involving alcohol, teach kids to drink in supervised environments, and also help the economy. I understand that underage drinking will always take place, but lowering it to 19 is a solid option to help protect the citizens of the United States. I'd be lying if I said underage drinking doesn't happen or it'll stop one day. Even during the prohibition, people still secretly snuck in alcohol. Even famous criminals like Al Capone found a way to sell it. According to criminallaw.com, an MIP is a minor in possession. An MIP occurs when an individual under the age of 21 in the United States is in possession or has consumed alcohol. Government has made MIP laws more lenient over the past few years. In April 2017, Governor Rick Snyder signed an MIP law that took effect in the start of this year, 2018. The new revisions state that someone caught underage drinking will only receive a $100 fine, but the individual will not be penalized on their personal record prior to the whole law where they would receive points against them. Um, in states like California, you can have your license suspended on the first offense. However, there are certain rules, like if you're driving a automobile or you're working machinery, if you're drunk, that's a much, serious, much more serious offense. 
benefits to moving the drinking age to 19 versus 21. You are legally an adult in the United States at the age of 18. Uh, new rules or rights you get are the right to vote. You can gamble in most places. Some casinos are 21. Uh, you buy lottery tickets, buy tobacco. Even underage kids are buying tobacco. You see 16-year-olds smoking swishers and vaping at school, which is weird, but it happens. And you can register for the Army at 18. So why wait until you turn 21 to legally consume alcohol when you can only turn 19? You might ask why I should be 18. Well, I think the smart thing to do is keep legal drinking away from high schoolers. I think it would be correct to allow college students to purchase and consume alcohol, not high schoolers. Um, it teaches young kids and adults the proper place to consume alcohol. When I say this, I mean with proper supervision, not surrounded by a bunch of other drunk kids that are telling you to keep drinking, keep going. With other people and professionals around, they kind of get uh, more of a sense of safety and they can kind of pace themselves throughout the night or whenever they're drinking. The wrong places are fraternities in your friends' basements. Like I said, there's no supervision, there's no parents. Um, example of this would just be binge drinking. We would hope to persuade super, uh, safer behavior when you're with adults in bars, restaurants, whatever it is. There are fewer drunk driving accidents in countries with drinking ages at 18 or 19 versus 21. Obviously as an officer and sheriff, this is my biggest concern. Um, like I've seen college kids, it's just stupid. Since 1984, when the drinking age in the United States was changed to 21, there have been more drunk driving accidents compared to Canada and European countries where the drinking age is under 21. According to the United States Department of, Department of Transportation in 2016, there are over 10,000 fatalities due to drunk driving in the United States. In the U.S., that is 2% higher than France. In France, they have a drinking age of only 18, and it, they're 2% lower, which means less accidents, mean less fatalities, and less stupid decisions I think being made by those driving and drinking at the same time. Last, I think lowering it to 19 would benefit the economy greatly. Allowing younger kids to consume and purchase alcohol would have a huge effect on the economy. When 19-year-old adults purchase alcohol, it will benefit local bars, drugstores, and restaurants, especially in college towns like East Lansing and Ann Arbor. And as long as current resident of Lansing, I would love to see the local economy thriving. So you can kind of see all the skills and traits that we've learned get tied together here. I was very organized. I felt very organized because I wanted to make sure I nailed my role and character as a police officer. I also felt really relaxed working with the other guys who actually I became friends with over the time we had over the semester. I thought I was prepared for our topic and my argument about changing the drinking age, which made it very engaging for the audience. I also felt a lot more confident because it was already our third speech of the semester. So in review, the five skills were confidence, preparation, relax yourself, engage the audience, and organization. With these five skills, I think you'll have a lot of success when it comes to public speaking. I was happy to have learned these skills that I've explained in the video because in the future I'll have to give presentations at meetings um, where I'm working in the future. And if I'm running my own business one day, I have to be able to confidently uh, express or get my point across to my employees so learning these skills I'll definitely feel a lot more confident and prepared when it comes to that time